dear respected teachers, uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, dear spiritual friends, I'd like to um, invite you to continue to sit uh, quietly and still. Uh, you might want to um, continue to close your eyes if that feels comfortable to help you to uh, be more centered with no distractions. I find that that's helpful for me. Um, I, I want us to uh, invite that five-year-old child, that five-year-old child that we were, that five-year-old child who continues to live inside of us. I'd like for each of you, and I will do the same, to invite that five-year-old child to be present with us now, in this moment, that might be um, a new uh, a new piece of information for some of you that that five-year-old child is alive in you. She's simply a part of your experience. You were her. She is you, a part of you. So uh, we are. Uh, we also have the ten-year-old in us. We have the nine-year-old in us. We have the fifteen-year-old in us. So we have all those experiences of the children that we were at all those ages, and we also have uh, the five-year-old father. So my father as a five-year-old, lives inside of me. Uh, my mother, as a five-year-old, lives inside of me. As a ten-year-old, as a twelve-year-old, they are all alive in us, a part of us. But we, we have forgotten that. We don't... Uh, and I certainly, that was my experience too. I had to be introduced to the realization that that child was alive in me and that actually I was ignoring her. I wasn't paying any attention to her at all. And it took a while for me to uh, understand, to uh, grasp that, the truth of that, that a child who lived so long ago as a five-year-old had anything to do with me 30 or 40 years later, and actually I was 47 when I was introduced to the understanding that I had a child inside of me, that I had been ignoring all those years. So, I'd like to lead us in a, in a little bit of a continuing uh, guided meditation, and uh, it's, I think it's, it's almost easier to feel it than it is to try to understand it intellectually. You know, we are so accustomed to using our logical mind, our brain, to try to analyze something, try to know something. But this is not so much about knowing as it is about understanding, and there is a difference. So we can understand something and maybe not even have words for it, but we still understand it. So if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, <clears throat> so as we uh, breathe in, breathe out, we can invite that five-year-old child who was me, who was you, 
So each of us is doing this. So, hello to my five-year-old child. You, you might even uh, visualize that child. You might know what you looked like at age five. And as we uh, invite that five-year-old to come into the moment, into this present moment, we can see that that child suffered a lot. We can see that as a five-year-old, we were very vulnerable. We were very easily hurt. We were very fragile. Just one harsh look from mom or dad or aunt or uncle or grandma could create such suffering in us that lasts a lifetime. Just one moment of feeling uh, that we don't belong or that we've been forgotten or that someone doesn't love us can last a lifetime. And so as we meet this five-year-old child, the girl that I was or the boy that I was at age five, we can look at this little boy, this little girl, with such love and compassion. And we can say to that child, you're safe now. I'm an adult, I've grown up, and I know that you're a part of me, and I know that I have been ignoring you, but I promise I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm here for you. I will take care of us because I'm an adult now. You don't have to stay back there in a scary place, maybe a some incident that was very frightening or sad, even traumatic. That's in the past, and now here you are with me in the present moment, and I'm an adult. And we are surrounded by good spiritual friends. We're surrounded by brothers and sisters on the path. And we don't have anything to fear now. So let us just... Uh, be with that little five-year-old boy, that little five-year-old girl, as we breathe in and out. And I'm going to ask Brother Will to invite just one sound of the bell to make sure that we're in this present moment and that that child is here with us in this present moment. Such a beautiful child, such an innocent child who only wants to be loved, wants to be accepted, wants to know she belongs, wants to know that he's safe. He suffered a lot. She suffered a lot. Even, even when we live in a family that's very loving and wholesome, uh, healthy, emotionally, we still suffer as children. It is impossible for mom and dad, for grandma, to always be at our side. It's impossible to be protected every moment when we are children. So things happen, sometimes very scary things, sometimes not so scary, but still painful. And we carry that, we carry those wounds with us. So the child is a wounded child. Every child is a wounded child.
continuing to breathe, knowing that we're safe, knowing the child is safe. We can always be assured that nothing is ever going to come up, no emotion, no feeling will ever overwhelm us, especially in these conditions. We have chosen to come here tonight of our free will. We're surrounded by good friends. This is a wonderful opportunity to get to know the five-year-old child I was, the five-year-old child you were. You might be surprised to know that you also have the five-year-old father in you. Your father, my father, at age five, lives inside of me. I know the circumstances where my father was born, the place on the planet, the time, the, the culture, the conditions, what was going on at that time in that environment. And so I can know some concrete uh, ways that my father would have suffered. I know that in those years, the early years of the 20th century, Mm -hmm. It was not, uh, people were so busy trying to survive, working so hard, the parents having to work to survive physically, to put bread on the table. Uh, it was not uh, very common for children to be hugged and told that they were loved and it was not very common for parents to have time to sit and look into a child's eyes and say, so how are you today, darling? Did you have a good day at school? Are you, ha are you a happy little boy? What can mother do for you? No. I think it was much more difficult in those years and may be very difficult still for some people. In this culture, the culture I grew up in, the little boy suffered. Very vulnerable. Very sad and lonely much of the time. Trying to get it right. Trying to be a good little boy wanting to please mom and dad, not wanting to be punished. And in those days, it was very common to punish children, sometimes in very terrible ways. And that suffering follows us all of our lives. And until that cycle is broken, that cycle continues generationally. So then that little boy grows up, he has children, and he raises his children the way he was raised. He treats his children the way he was treated, because he learned that. That's all he knows. So he parents the way he was parented. And the suffering continues. So this is very important work. Very, very important work to work with the inner child, to heal this inner child, these inner children, because we have more than one inside of us. So I'll ask Brother Will to please invite a bell and let us just follow our in-breath and out-breath as we contemplate the reality of our little five-year-old father, the, the person, the five-year-old boy who was our father.
He's such a sweet little boy. But he suffered. And then he grew up to be a man who suffers because he has that child in him. But he never knew that. He didn't know there was another way. I invite you to now contemplate your mother as a five-year-old little girl, also very fragile, very vulnerable, very easily hurt, neglected, perhaps, ignored at times, big families, so much going on in the house, not enough time to protect that little girl always. Sometimes some, some things happen that can haunt a little girl all the way into womanhood and into her marriage, affecting all of her relationships because she's wounded and she forgets it. She doesn't forget that. So she suppresses those memories. After all, they happened a long time ago, she says. What can I do about that now? I just make the best of my life. After all, that little girl lived a long time ago. What does that have to do with today? But it has everything to do with today. Everything about today is impacted by what happened long ago. All those unresolved, unhealed wounds of abandonment. I think some of you heard me uh, refer to this the other day in another talk, that how quickly as children we can feel abandoned. And, it, and it's very real to take a child to daycare for that first day to hand that child over to a caregiver they don't know, and you walk out the door, and there is a root right there of suffering that can follow them their whole lives. Mom and Dad don't care. They don't love me. They left me with people I don't even know. It can be like that. Or if mom leaves to go to work or dad has to go far away and the child doesn't see dad for a long time, can feel abandoned. The child doesn't understand. Of course, as an adult, we understand. Dad had to do that. Or mom had to do that. For the family to survive, of course. But a little five-year-old understands none of that. None at all. And so we look at that little five-year-old girl who was our mother, and we can look at her with love and compassion and understanding. Ah, oh, now we understand, Mother. We understand. Brother Will would invite a bell. We'll sit with mother as a five-year-old. So continuing to follow the breath all the way in and all the way out. Being with mother as a five-year-old girl. 
feeling the love and compassion. Feeling the love and compassion for all the children who live inside of me. Myself at every age, my mother at every age, my father at every age, my grandparents. All my ancestors live inside of me. I am my ancestors. I am my mother. I am my father. I'm not simply connected. I am them. I continue them. I am their continuation. How beautiful. And when you're ready, you might want to gently open your eyes. And Brother Will can invite another bell because we love the sound of the bell. It keeps us in this moment. You might want to open your eyes and shift around a little bit. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My hope is that... Um, Tonight, that that uh, our understanding can be can be deep enough that we stay open uh, to this realization that we have all these children living inside of us, and that we are motivated when we leave here to continue to deepen our relationship with these children who live inside of us that we continue to uh, talk to them, talk to them, listen to them, ask them, you know, what do you need? What's going on? You know, this is how we heal, not only ourselves and, and our parents and our grandparents and all of our ancestors. This is how we heal the world. It's really, really important work because I mentioned that until a healing takes place, until something changes, the cycle continues. So it is generational. But when we, when we just, when we wake up a bit and begin to wake up more and more to this understanding that we are so much more than just this, then the future generations have a chance because then you will transmit a different understanding to your children. For those of you who haven't had children yet, or even if you have had children, when you do this work, it affects them. They will be affected and their children will benefit. Yeah. So it takes um, I think it takes determination. Determination to say, yeah, you know, and I, I have understood that something has not been quite right. I've wondered why when this happens, I always want to say that. Or why is it that I don't have a good relationship? with my mother, or my in-laws, or my father. What is that? How can I, how can I, 
how can I have that be different? What can I do so that it, it is different? Because things do change. So how can I give it a chance to change? How can our relationship become healthier and loving? Because that's what we all want, isn't it? We want peace in the family. We want peace inside here, and we want peace in the family. Ah, the, the arguing and the, you know, the, the, uh, the misunderstanding and uh, the talking about things that happened 25 years ago, and for 25 years we've been saying the same things and nothing ever changes. Some of us live in families like that, where the arguments are always the same. I grew up in a family like that. And as a child, I used to look at that and like, it's always the same. Why is that? My sister and my mother, they talk about the same things. Nothing is ever resolved. Nothing ever seems to change. And for them, it didn't. It didn't change. But it did change for me because they were teachers for me. So I, uh, I'm grateful, very grateful. Uh, I'm grateful for everything, really, because because of everything that's happened. I'm sitting here with all of you, and I'm I uh, have finally, in the last twenty years, realized uh, some really ongoing, continuing peace, a peaceful mind and peaceful heart. Uh, I'm still a human being, so I have it. You know, I haven't levitated yet, or whatever it is that happens. I'm still walking on the planet, but I am I am here to tell you that uh, this practice works, and uh, this path that you're on is a path of healing and transforming not only yourselves individually, but your entire family and your community. So it's worthwhile. It's worthwhile work. Yeah. I know it can be a, it's a new concept that all these children are alive in us and that they're the ones who are crying for help, really. They're the ones who are saying, something needs to change. That's the child inside. It's like, hey, listen to me. And so, very often that, that manifests in the body is some pain in the body. Uh, so you might have noticed a pattern sometimes. That when this is happening, you feel a tightness here or a heaviness in the chest. Uh, that's the child letting you know. Letting you know something. So then we listen to the child and we do that by listening to the body because the child is in every cell of the body. All those emotions, all those fears, and the happiness and the joy, all of that is in every cell of our body. So I urge you, encourage you, to pay attention to the body. It never forgets anything. It will tell you what you need to know. And if you slow down and sit with it, you will know what to do or not do. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to use your logical mind. You don't have to do anything but have the motivation to understand, the intention to understand. And of course, the more we understand, the more love comes into our life. So what time is it? So it seems to me that we've been together about one hour. Mm -hmm. Um, I understand that we have a, a online group, and uh, so I think I forgot to welcome the online group. And then we have a wonderful group sitting here in the room with us. So uh, we're all together, whether we're across the planet or here. Yeah. So I um, I'd like to pour myself a little more. And um, invite you to take a drink of uh, tea or water, whatever you have there. And, uh, and then I'm very, very uh, open to answering questions. I would suppose that uh, 
the guided meditation by Brother Will, and then the, what uh, I've had to say about the inner child and the inner children uh, might have uh, triggered some questions in you. Uh, and now is the time to ask them, and we'll do our best to, to answer them. <laughs> 